Yeah! We've never done a top 10 list on this channel, ever, and now we are. Top 10 models that Games Workshop has completely forgotten about. And uh, Jen and Murray are here. Oh, and Liam. Yes. Kicking off our list with number 10, we have the venerable Chaos Space Marine Bikers. As a longtime Chaos Space Marine player, these models were clunky when I was first getting started in the hobby. In recent years, we have seen the entire Chaos Space Marine range get updated with gorgeous new models, new resized Space Marines, Terminators, and a plethora of exciting demon engines and custom characters. We've seen the return of demon Primarchs and sub-factions to Chaos Space Marines, which makes the Chaos Biker Kit from 1999 stand out like a sore thumb. These bikes are actually the oldest Chaos Space Marine kit in the range and the only models from the 90s still purchasable as part of the faction. I should give an honourable mention to the Emperor's Children Marines who were released in 2002 and also sorely need an update. Uh, also the Defiler, that's pretty old. While Chaos Space Marines are in a truly amazing place today model wise compared to what they used to be, the fact that there's only these two ancient kits and the Chaos bikes means it seems like a really easy fix for Games Workshop to make Chaos Space Marines one of the most modern and up-to-date ranges in the entire game. And that's why they land at number 10 on our list. Number nine, the Yanari, a brand new elder faction that got abandoned. For anyone that is a Dark Elder, Elder, or a Harley Quinn fan, in 2017, Games Workshop released a kit that I was super excited for. It was Gathering Storm 2, and it featured some of the models for the new faction, the Yanari. The Gathering Storm series had some beautifully designed boxes and models to go along with it, and the Yanari was no exception. These models were so full of detail and character, and even included special artwork, novels, and a bunch of memorabilia to go along with it. I was personally really excited to see this army grow, but unfortunately, for some reason, this was the faction that Games Workshop seemed to have forgotten. Sadly, since its release for 8th edition Warhammer 40k, there has been no updates to this army. It's interesting that Games Workshop made them such important characters in the lore. So will the Yanari ever become an actual faction for Games Workshop? Well, I'm certainly hoping so. I really hope to see more models from this line, including maybe some War Walkers or other unique units. Number 8. Grey Knights. Grey Knights are arguably the best of the best of the Space Marines. If every Space Marine is considered a hero in its own right, then every Grey Knight is surely a superhero. In fact, they're all psychers, every single one of them. They have the best kit, the best weapons, they're all esoteric, and their armor just looks absolutely incredible. Originally in pewter models, they made their change to plastic kits in 2011. This change to plastic also made them multi-part and I think also the first iteration of the multiple squad options inside one box as well, which was so good to have. They just really need that Primaris tweak just to come into scale with everything else. True scale Primaris Grey Knights, that would be awesome to behold. I just want that. If we can get that again with the Primaris upgrade, that would be absolutely perfect for that faction. Number seven. Orcs, a beloved faction and one that has seen recent multiple kit updates, but not the ones that people have asked for. One of Games Workshop's newest releases was the Beast Snaggers for the Orcs faction. Now these guys look pretty snazzy, but compared to the rest of the line, I feel like we need to update our Orcs. They also received an update on their Orcs Boys kit, which was a desperately needed upgrade. Unfortunately, there are a couple of kits that have kind of been left to the wayside. Stone Boys, Grots, and Knobs were all released back in 2009. And living up to today's standards, I feel like they all suffer from the same problem. I personally feel like these kits suffer from the old Games Workshop Space Marine static pose, where they desperately need hip joint replacements and to look a little less stiff. We all know Orcs have so much personality and I feel like these bottles don't really do them justice. We've definitely seen some of the Orcs personality get fleshed out in some of Games Workshop newer kits, but we just need to see the rest of the range updated. Number six, Tau Crute and Auxiliaries. Released in 2001, the Tau Empire were one of the first factions introduced to the Warhammer 40k setting in a long time. When they launched in 2001, they came alongside their Krut kin, mercenary allies to the Tau Empire with quite a decent small selection of models, including Krut, Krut Shapers, Krut Hounds, and the Krut Ox. Later on in 2006, this concept of the Tau and their auxiliary forces would be expanded further, with several new species being mentioned in the fluff and the 
Vespid Stingwings being added to the range. Around this era, Forgeworld also produced some support for the Crute range, but sadly, after this point, nothing was seen again. This makes the Crute over 20 years old, and the Vespid's about to get their driving license as they celebrate their 18th birthday. Recently, we have seen a new kill team added, which is a warband of Crute mercenaries that show us the potential of a fully updated Crute range. These models look fantastic, but technically they are not the Crute warriors that you can field in a Tau Codex. They're their own squad. And with these core Crute reimagined, it highlights even further just how abandoned the Tau auxiliaries have been. This subset of Tau is in desperate need of a refresh, with all of the attendant Crute kits, such as Crute hounds and Crutoxes, starting to look truly ancient alongside the rest of the faction. Many people, such as myself, would not only love to see these models redone and reposed, but also more Tau auxiliaries added to the range. There are so many mentioned in the lore, it would be really fantastic to see a few more model kits to show off that massively important side of Tau culture. And with such an important impact on the faction's sense of identity and the huge age the kits are showing, that is why we have chosen to put the Crute and by extension the Tau auxiliaries at number six on this list. Games Workshop, let's see some more Tau Orcs. Tau Orcs? Tau Auxiliaries, although Tau Orcs could be interesting. <laughs> Number 15, tabletop merch freshness. The first thing you'd want in your wardrobe are clothes that support a creator. But as it turns out, that is exactly what you'll get if you go to itstabletoptime.com. Originally posted on August 16, 2023 at 11.41, Discord user Dave showcased the amazing merch in a screenshot. It was followed up by an anonymous user who replied, wow, that merch looks great and I bet it supports tabletop time. That is correct. It does. Links are in the description. Number five, Imperial Guard regiments. Let's talk about the Imperial Guard, Astra Militarum, and all of their little regiments that kind of don't exist anymore. You can get the rules for Cadians and Death Corps of Krieg because, you know, we have our own little kill teams and such, and Cadia is such a big part of the lore. But what about Katachan, Fostorians, my boys, the Steel Legion, the Talon Desert Raiders. Desert Raiders haven't seen a model since 1998. All of these models, they just give so much life into 40K. It's all about aliens and big space marines and things. So it'd be really cool if we could just get an upgrade sprue, a few kill teams of the different factions. And it's something I'd personally really enjoy seeing being brought back into 40K. Number four, Inquisitorial Agents. A mix of ancient kits that are over 20 years old. Originally known as Demon Hunters. All of these models are technically fieldable in 10th edition. Despite having some amazing new sculpts, the biggest problem for this faction is squads of units. They're only available in Monopro's minis and are also exclusive to these box sets, which are not only super expensive, but also hard to get. Back in 3rd edition of Warhammer 40k, Games Workshop released a codex called Demon Hunters, which consisted of two sub-factions, the Demon Hunters and the Grey Knights. The Demon Hunters was a truly unique army that allowed you to add other factions into it. This was based around their Inquisitional retinue. So you'd have your Inquisitor, and then you'd have their bodyguards as well, and then you could add on different factions to create your army. It was truly unique and a really cool experience for anyone wanting to collect 40k. Agents of the Inquisition was a kill team box that was released in May of this year, and it featured some old models made into new designs. One of these specifically was the Servitor model. Now, the original one was pretty cool, but he didn't get an update for a very long time. Unfortunately, there is only one of these models, and you have to buy a kill team box, which you can now no longer buy. It's extremely limited, and it's really confusing as to why Games Workshop does this. Another example was the Crusaders that were also made back for Demon Hunters when it was released originally. Again, these models were in desperate need of an update and they finally got one. This was featured in a very specific game called Combat Arena. Again, it is available for you, but there is only one model of a Crusader. Crusaders also used to be in the 5th edition Guard Codex, but unfortunately were dropped later on. The Crusader model is actually something I'm super interested in, but unfortunately, if I want to get my hands on one, I have to buy the game. And even then, I only get one model when if I want to buy a unit, it's just not possible. This is probably why people are considering going to third parties or keep bashing their own designs. Another special mention is the Death Cult Assassins. Now, these are still available on the Games Workshop website as a pewter model released in 2003. 
Unfortunately, these guys never saw a plastic release, but that was until Kill Team Rogue Trader came out. I personally really love the Death Cult Assassin that they've put into the Rogue Trader Kill Team, but yet again, there is only one model of her. That means if I want to make a unit, it's pretty much impossible unless I want them to look all the same and burn my wallet at the same time. Demon Hunters would go on to become Codex Witch Hunters in 4th edition, with the promise of the new Codex Alien Hunters in 5th edition. Sadly, this never came to fruition and players are just eagerly waiting to see if Games Workshop will release Alien Hunters. Number three, tanks. That's right, tanks very much Games Workshop for thinking you can get away with updating pretty much every infantry model across all the factions and completely ignoring the vehicles. That's right, almost every main range vehicle for the main range factions are now approaching if not 20 years old. Now while it does seem that for Space Marines all the vehicles are going the way of Primaris and the new Primaris tanks look lovely, for most other factions that is not the case. Aldar Falcons clock in at 1990. Tau Devilfish 2001 alongside their kin in the Chaos Space Marine Rhinos, Predators and Land Raiders in the early thousands. And then we also have the Treadhead Company themselves, the Imperial Guard, where most of their tanks are also from the mid to early thousands. The Lehman Russes, Chimeras and Hellhounds of the day have been rocking around for the entire time I've been an adult. <laughs> Now these vehicle kits have held up to a degree and I think that's why Games Workshop have been able to get away with not updating them. But now that we're starting to see updated or new vehicles for other factions like the Leagues of Votan, the new Orc buggies or the Primaris tanks, it becomes really evident that these vehicles are becoming very dated. They're very small, they're very low resolution of detail. If we look at tanks like the Rogal Dawn and we put that alongside classic IG sculpts like the Lehman Russo Chimera, they barely look like they're part of the same range. So Games Workshop, you can't keep getting away with it. Update your vehicles. I'm a tank fan and I have been my whole life and I would really love to see Games Workshop improve their range of vehicles. For example, Chaos Space Marine. How about you take the brand new Horus Heresy kits, chuck in a brand new Chaos Space Marine sprue and there we go. We have beautiful Chaos tanks that are distinct from the Primaris tanks based on the old Heresy gear which makes sense because that's what they took with them into the war. Overall, beautiful new designs like the Rogal Dawn have given me a taste for what tanks could look like in 40K if they would just update them. And that's why tanks crossing so many factions and covering so many models are my number three on my list of the most abandoned and forgotten Games Workshop models. Number two, Space Marine chapters. Space Marines are the flagship faction of Warhammer 40K and also the most prolific in releases. However, the most beloved aspect of the Space Marines are in their chapters or sub-factions, notably the ones with the most stylized special units, the veterans that are just bedecked in all the gear and have the cool stuff. They're the ones people love. But also, they're the ones that haven't made it to Primaris yet. Most notably are the Dark Angels, the Space Wolves, and the Blood Angels, all of which have very cool, very unique units. And it would be really cool to see them realized in Primaris. To give an example, the Blood Angels character Dante just made it to Primaris. And although the old model was really cool, the Primaris one is Awesome, it's absolutely epic. In the same vein, the Dark Angels have the Death Wing and the Raven Wing, two very unique different aspects of the one chapter. Now we just got real scale Terminators, so it would be really easy to see them realized in Death Wing Terminators. And the Raven Wing, well, they all go around on bikes, a lot like White Scars. And all the old firstborn Space Marines on bikes, they're all leaving the shop. They're not gonna be available for much longer. In fact, they don't even have an actual captain or even a lieutenant on a bike. We have a chaplain and that's it. For the Ravenwing and White Scars, bikes their whole life. We have dart cards for some of them, including all these captains on bikes, and they have either a picture of an old model or just generic Space Marine artwork. It's a picture of a Primaris Grav Tank. It's, yeah, it's, it's just there. It's just a placeholder image. So clearly Games Workshop knows that we need models for these. Games Workshop, please give us models. <laughs> these models are so old, they came out when I was wearing diapers. And while it feels like I'll be wearing them again by the time this model gets an update, I have hope. 
for new Elder Aspect Warriors. That's right, how could they not be number one on our list? Warp Spiders came out in 1994. The Elder have been a core part of Warhammer 40k since its inception in Warhammer Rogue Trader. And after the exploratory days of early Rogue Trader, the Warhammer 40k we know today really came to fruition in 1993 with its second edition. Warp Spiders, released in 1994 as part of the Eldar range. These are one of, if not the oldest model kits still available for purchase on the Games Workshop website. While the model kit you currently get is a fine cast recast of the original metal models, they are indeed the very same sculpts that graced the paperbacks of White Dwarf almost 30 years ago. Warp Spiders are beloved by many in the community due to their inclusion in the game Dawn of War. Strike quickly while our enemy slumbers. And these ancient models have held up astonishingly well due to the amazingly high quality heavy metal paint jobs of the ones on the Games Workshop website. You really can't tell how old they are until you see other photos of the models. But it's not just Warp Spiders. Despite being more recent, many of the other Eldar models in their range and Aspect Warriors in particular are almost as old. And far worse than being old, they are single or two or three sculpts in monopose, which are then repeated throughout a pack. The Swooping Hawks are from the year 2000 and the Dire Avengers and Striking Scorpions are from the year 2006. But each one of these three only has around three different sculpts available and all of them are monopose. The exception to this are the Dire Avengers, which are a plastic kit, but when you compare them to the brand new Elder Guardians kit, their age becomes quite obvious. Now, why are these Aspect Warriors being missing and forgotten such a problem? That's because the Aspects aren't a side faction or a niche element of the Eldar in the way that the crew could be considered for the Tau. The Aspects are a fundamental part of Eldar culture, heavily represented in the lore and in every game depiction they've ever had. The Aspects are the different ways that the Eldar march to war, representing their specialties, and to have fully half of their specialties in these ancient monopose models that are expensive and haven't aged well feels like a real hit to the faction. With kits like this in a faction that's starting to look as nice as the Eldar, it seems like only tournament players who care specifically about the rules of units or people with a love for nostalgic sculpts have any reason to purchase these models. With all that said, it's worth noting, I don't play Elder. I play Chaos, I play Trader Guard, and I play the Tau Empire. But please, Games Workshop, update the Aspect Warriors. There are rumors that striking scorpions will be seen in a new kill team box soon, and I really hope that's true. And given how striking scorpions kind of look like Predator, it would be a real miss not to update the Katachan jungle fighters and have a Predator box with striking scorpions versus Katachans. But you know that won't happen. It's gonna be Space Marine Scouts probably. The space elves need it. Give them some love. It's time to let those millennial 90s kids that are the warp spiders retire. They're old enough to remember Y2K, so it's about time they got a replacement. And all that is why the Eldar Aspect Warriors top our list, feeling like the number one collection of models that Games Workshop have just forgotten about, despite their importance to the lore and worlds of 40k. And that was our list of the top 10 factions and models that Games Workshop has seemingly completely forgotten about. Let us know what your top 10 list is of models that you think Games Workshop has forgotten about. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this. Also, if you really enjoyed this and you also missed some of your favorite guard regiments, we're going to be diving into that in our next video. Poor Vostroyans. Hey, uh, also thank you to our patrons for watching this video. Your names have been scrolling over this screen somewhere interesting, like it's 2021. Him has done that thing where he picked someone and he's been uh, like covering their face with it and it's been kind of comical. Good and anyone who's been around the channel for a while will remember what that's like. Uh, but for now, the lights in this room are way too bright and it's blinding me, so I'm gonna go. Liam's nodding. He's good. He's got this. You look so confused. <laughs> <laughs>